The idea of navigating by the stars just sounds so magical. You're out in the middle of the ocean, and just by the powers of observation, you figure out exactly where you are on this Earth. It's, it's so cool. But when you start, you know, it's, it's kind of daunting, because you look into the sky and there's so many stars up there. So, you know, which star do you look at? How do you look at it? Like, all these questions start coming in and it goes from beautiful to overwhelming and scary. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can start with celestial navigation in the easiest way possible. All you're going to need are your eyes, a sextant, and a clock. But it's pretty easy. So with this, you'll be able to figure out your exact latitude and longitude with pretty much no math. Now, if you want, you can go very advanced with celestial navigation and do incredible things with it. But as you get further into celestial navigation, you also get further into all the math of celestial navigation. So celestial navigation refers to using the celestial bodies to calculate your position and to navigate. Now, a celestial body is any star, the moon, planets, sun, like anything up there. You can use it to then figure out where you are. Now, GPS satellites do not count. That is not celestial navigation. That is just modern awesomeness to make life easy. But say that your GPS receiver falls overboard or just your batteries die or you get struck by lightning or just whatever. Stuff happens. It's good to have a backup. That way you can, you know, still figure out where you are using the old methods that are tried and true. So of all the celestial bodies, there are two that make your life so much easier. One is the sun, the other is the North Star. Now the reason the sun is really good to use is because it's big and, let's be honest, it's up most of the day. So aside from the sun, the other easy celestial body to use is the North Star. Now the North Star is so important because it is the only star that is directly over the Earth's North Pole. So that means that as the Earth spins on its tilted axis, Polaris is directly above it. It's due north. So this is really good because, for example, when we're sailing across the Atlantic, our compass doesn't have a light and we have no GPS receivers or any of that kind of stuff in the cockpit. Like we have one GPS display down in the nav station. We really honestly don't use electronics when we sail. Now, at night, we couldn't really see the compass because it's dark and we don't have a light in it. And the reason we don't have a light in it is because we really don't need it. When you're out in the middle of the ocean, the stars are your compass. And the North Star doesn't move. So all the stars at night rotate. Because actually, the Earth is rotating around them. But from your perspective, it looks like the stars are passing overhead. And they're all rotating and spinning and moving and all that, which means that if you're, like, focusing on one star... Well, tonight it's going to be there, but later tonight it's going to be over here, and you know, if you're following that star, you're going to get a little off course. But the North Star does not move, because being how it is directly centered over the North Pole, it is stationary. So all the stars in the sky actually rotate around it, and it remains singular and permanent. So when we were sailing, and sailing across the Atlantic, it was really easy because... The North Star was on our port side as we were heading from the U.S. to Europe. So you just sit back in the cockpit, relax, and make sure that that star stays there. So when you're looking up at the stars, there's a whole lot of them. It's a little hard to look up and be like, alright, which one's Polaris? Because if you use your sextant and measure the angle to the wrong star, well now you have the wrong latitude. So that's kind of an issue. So, how do you know that you're looking at Polaris? Well, there's a couple tricks. One, you can look at your compass and just look directly north and it's going to be a bright star in that direction and you should ideally have a rough idea what latitude you're in and then you know how high up into the sky to be looking that's one way but it's not really the best way because when you're navigating by the stars you should know the stars in the sky and to know the stars in the sky means that you should know the constellations of the sky so i personally use three constellations to make sure that i found the north north star and that i'm looking at the correct one the first one that i use is the big dipper now the Big Dipper, as its name implies, looks like a big spoon. So it's up in the sky, and it's got its handle runs, and then there's four stars that make up the ladle part, the Dipper. Now, from these four stars, these last two that are here, so there's like one here and one here, just make a straight line out, and then a smidge past, and that'll lead you 
to the North Star, that's Polaris. Now Polaris itself is actually part of a constellation called the Little Dipper. So it sits like this, and it's the last star of the tail. Now the Big Dipper looks like an actual ladle, like it's got, you know, the ladle, and then a handle with a bit of a curve just like this one. The Little Dipper, honestly, looks like that. It's, it's weird looking. It, something happened. It looks like a bent dipper, to be honest. So, it's going to be very small and not as bright. So the North Star is really bright, and there's two stars in the ladle that are bright. The rest are kind of dim, but it is the last star in the tail. Now, to make sure, like, doubly sure that you found the North Star, and that it's not by chance the wrong one, even though you have two constellations to confirm it, is I use a third constellation. Now, if you do this line again, so these last two that made the line that led right to this guy, you follow that line and continue, you're gonna come to another constellation that is called Cassiopeia, and it looks like a W. So if you see a W, a Big Dipper, and right in the middle, the North Star, and then you'll see the Little Dipper coming off of it. If you see that, you know you're on the right star, and you know that you're ready to take your sight. Now the reason you can't just learn one constellation or just a single star and just get really good at like, yep, yep, that, that's a star, I'm sure, is what if there's clouds and you can't really see the constellation? Like, what if you only learn to find the North Star from the Big Dipper and then that day, for whatever reason, say you're at a latitude where the Big Dipper is actually hidden under the horizon for a good portion of the night, or worse, there's clouds out in the sky, and you can't see all the stars out there. Now what? So if you can find more constellations that help point towards the North Star, then even if some of them are obscured and you can't really see everything, you can see a couple constellations and then be pointed in the right direction. So say that everything except the North Star is obscured in the Little Dipper. You have the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia pointing at this lone star in the sky that's just popping out from beyond the cloud. You know that is the North Star, and you better get your reading quickly before that star gets covered, and then you can't until the sky clears again. So that is why it's really important to know the stars in the sky, and to just get a general feel for where they all are, and always keep in mind that the stars are always spinning. So don't get used to being like the Little Dippers here and the Big Dippers here because later in the night, it's going to be this way. So you want to have your options available and know that the sky moves all the time. And then the other part is as you're traveling across the sea, your position on the Earth is changing. So that means that the stars you're going to see in the sky are going to be in different places. So it's really good to know a bunch of constellations so that if you look up into the sky one night, you're not completely disoriented, and you know roughly where you are. So that's it. That's navigating by the stars. It's really easy to do when you break it down to the simple fact that it is just you looking at the stars. Now, looking at them is nice. You know which way is north because Polaris is always north. But that doesn't tell you exactly where you are. So this is where the first step comes in in finding your position. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to measure the height of Polaris to the horizon. The angle that it is, is going to be your latitude to the dot. There's no math. You literally take a sextant and measure the angle from the horizon to the North Star. Done. That is your latitude. And you can get that position at any time during the night because it doesn't matter what time it is. Because the Polaris is always directly over the North Pole. It doesn't move. So that means that you can find your position, no math, it's literally, take the reading, write it down, you are done. When you measure the horizon to the North Star, whatever angle it gives, that is where you're standing on the Earth. So if you're this little fondue fork, you're standing on here, so your horizon, your point of view, your plane of reference, that is relative to the North Star, and the angle that you're going to get from where you're standing to directly above you is going to be your latitude. So that's why as you go climbing up, your angle to the star will change. And that is why 
at night, it is so easy to find your latitude because all you have to do is measure the North Star to the horizon. So Polaris gives you your latitude, but it doesn't give you your longitude. You need a different star for your longitude. And the star that you need is out all day long because you're going to be looking at the sun. So you know that the Earth is round and that every day it takes 24 hours for the Earth to do a full turn all the way around. So what that means is that with time, you can figure out your longitude because we know that the Earth is set in latitudes and then again in longitudes. So if the Earth takes 24 hours to do a full rotation and the Earth being a sphere, that means that it can also be divided up into 360 degrees. So that means that it takes 24 hours to have the Sun move over every single degree of the Earth. So what that means is that every hour, every 60 minutes, the Sun will pass over 15 degrees of the Earth. So if you have a watch that is set to UTC, or Universal Time Coordinated, you can figure out exactly where your longitude is without using a sextant and without using a book or anything. All you have to do is watch the sun. When you're standing on the earth and you're, you know, this guy here, and the sun comes out, and the sun's shooting its rays, you know, at you. So you see the sun, and the sun's looking at you, and it's going along. At some point, it's directly overhead. And that is called your local apparent noon. Now that isn't always exactly noon, which is 12 o'clock, but it's, it's around that time. And that's why time zones exist, to help have everyone have noon at noon. But it, it's plus or minus some minutes. Now, what this means is that if you pay attention, and when the sun is directly overhead, also as it's passing through the sky, when it's at its highest point, that is your local apparent noon. And if you record the time when that occurs, and the sun is directly over you, you can then use that exact time to calculate where you are on the Earth and get your longitude. So it's really simple. Every hour that has passed since noon UTC is 15 degrees. So if you are directly on the prime meridian and you're at zero degrees, that means that your local noon will be at 12 o'clock noon UTC. Now if you are at 15 degrees west, that means that it's going to occur at 1 p.m. So if you record the exact time when your noon occurs, and then you take the difference in time between when your noon happened and when it was noon at UTC, that will give you the difference in time. So if you take the difference in time from your local apparent noon, when the sun was directly over you, to noon UTC, that time difference will give you exactly how many degrees of longitude you are. So with this time difference, you can calculate the exact degrees and minutes that you are east or west. So all you need to do is look at the stars at night to get your latitude, and then look at the star by day to get your longitude. That's it. You don't need an almanac, you don't need to do any crazy math, it's just simple arithmetic. So, to get your position by night, you use the North Star and that will give you your latitude. By day, you use the sun and a clock and that will give you your longitude. Now there's a couple tricks that I personally use to know when is it time to take the, to take the sight of the sun. So first off, the shadows start getting shorter. That's a huge clue because the sun's coming up higher. The second thing I do is I actually just look at my compass and I look at the little stick that pops up on the compass. When its shadow is starting to get pretty close to north, I know that it's time to get the sextant out. Now, there are magnetic variances, so magnetic north is not the same as true north. You don't wait till the sun is directly over the magnetic south and its shadow is casting over the magnetic north, because that might be wrong by several degrees. If you look at the charts, you'll see magnetic variance can be plus or minus 10 degrees. You know the magnetic variance of the area you're on because on the paper charts it's written what the magnetic variance is. So you have an idea that when it starts getting to this area, it's time to get the sextant out. So when you're measuring the sun for your, to get your longitude, what's going to happen is that you're going to take your sextant out and you're going to get a sight of the sun. You're going to measure it. And you're going to measure from the horizon to the bottom side of the sun because stars are tiny. They're just little points. But the sun's a big disk, so you could either measure at the top or the bottom. 
I always measure at the bottom. Now when you measure it, you want to measure a couple times because when you think is noon, or local apparent noon, might not actually be. And if you take the wrong time, then you get the wrong longitude. So you want to measure it, and you want to keep measuring it. And what you're going to see is that the sun's going to keep climbing, and then it'll be at its highest, and then it starts to descend again. So when it's at its highest point in the sky, that is your local apparent noon. And that is the time that you want to record to then use to calculate your longitude. So I hope you guys found this little introduction to celestial navigation helpful and, you know, just get you started in it. So just remember, at night you measure Polaris for your latitude, and by day you use the sun and a clock that's set to UTC to measure your longitude. And with that, you can start getting a feel for it and learn how to use the celestial bodies that move over us to help tell you exactly where you are on this beautiful Earth that we live on. Now in a future episode, I'm going to show you guys how you can then use the noon site, the one you took at noon to find your longitude, using the nautical almanac to actually calculate your latitude as well. So that means that at a single moment, you can look at the sun, record its height and its time, and then use that to figure out where are you on the earth. And at that one moment, you get both the latitude and the longitude. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.